Welcome back, everyone. So in the U.S., about one in five adults currently providing unpaid health or supportive care to someone they love. Whew, it takes patience, time, and a lot of energy, as you know, to be a caregiver, and it certainly is not easy. An aging parent, a sick spouse, or a child with a disability, caregiving comes in different forms, and it can be both rewarding and stressful. More than 65 million Americans provide care for a family member or friend during any given year. About 40% of caregivers leave their jobs to have more time to care for a loved one. And about half of all caregivers feel they have no choice about taking on that responsibility. So what makes for a good caregiver? The first step is to take care of yourself. A phrase I use often is take your oxygen first. If you don't, you're going to be less capable of helping that loved one. Make sure you get plenty of rest, eat a well-balanced diet, and don't skip your own medical appointments. Also, delegate responsibilities. For instance, if you're providing day-to-day -day care, maybe another family member can manage finances or medications. When possible, let the person being cared for participate in decision-making. Support groups are another great resource to help you connect with other caregivers and recognize when it becomes too much. You might want to consider an assisted living or other type of facility for your loved ones. You can spend your time in a much more quality-filled way than when you were having to dole out the medicine and fight with them to get a shower and do those, you know, tasks. So a study found that 18% of caregivers whose spouse had dementia died before their spouse. That meant a Family Caregiver Alliance and Caregiver Action Network was really good for those folks. It's a great resource for finding online or in-person support groups.